Welcome back. We've got a lot in store for you today. Here on Night Raven. Action! Halfway finished already. My my. It'll be over before you know it. The screaming gaffers may only have one alliance left, but it remains as strong as ever. Callum and Cater are also as close as ever. Cater also gets along fairly well with Silver, though the same can't be said about Silver and Callum. The Killer Grip's alliances grow stronger, but will that remain in the coming episodes? Azul and Ortho are stuck to each other like glue, and so are Ruggie and Ortho. Jade and Floyd remain by each other's sides as well, and Ruggie and Jade have grown suspiciously close according to other members of their team. Though, perhaps it's not as strange as Rook and Ruggie's friendship, or Leona and Jade's. Unlike his brother, Floyd cannot stand Ruggie, and Leona can't either. Floyd and Vil are also prone to getting into catfish fights. And now we move on to uh, today's challenge. Today's challenge is, Extreme Sports Challenge. Teams will compete in three extreme sport challenges. For the first challenge, extreme sofa bed skydiving, one person from each team will jump from a plane 5,000 feet above the ground and attempt to land on their sofa bed. As the two fall, their teams can move their respective sofa beds in order to help with the landing. The first to land on their sofa bed wins the challenge for their team. For the second challenge, extreme rodeo moose riding, one person from each team must rodeo ride a moose for 8 seconds. If either falls off the moose, they will land in a pile of dirty socks from the lost and found. The person that stays on the moose the longest wins the challenge for their team. For the final challenge, extreme sadu water ski, two people from each team are given a role, the driver, and the water skier. One at a time, drivers must race through a course while the water skier from the opposite team is attached to the driver's sadu. The water skier's goal is to collect as many opposing team flags as they can before the driver crosses the finish line while the driver's goal is to prevent the water skier from collecting flags. The water skier who collects the most flags wins the challenge for their team. The team that wins the most challenges wins invincibility and a tricked out, multi-massage mobile shower. The challenge opens up with Silver competing for the gaffers and Rook for the grips. It's a close call, but the win for this round goes to both. Silver, the second challenge will have Kata vs Leona, and to our surprise, Kata takes the win. With two out of three possible points, the winners of today's challenge are... The Screaming Gaffers. After the challenges, Silver is essentially ganged up on by Callum and Kata both, and the pair get together afterwards. The killer grips also see some drama with Rook and Ruggie getting into a small fight. My my, you're certainly in a rather sour mood. Uh, it's nothing, just Rook being Rook. Oh, are you alright? I'm fine, I just don't get why he cares so much. He needs to mind his own. Interesting. What was that? Oh, don't mind me, just thinking out loud. Do you remember what we discussed some time back? How could I forget? It is time to set things in motion. You know what to do. Oh, gotcha. You got it, boss. You know what comes next. The award ceremony. The first award goes to uh, Ortho. The second award goes to uh, Jade. The third award goes to uh, Floyd. The fourth award goes to uh, Leona. The fifth award goes to uh, Ruggy. The sixth award goes to uh, Vil. The seventh award goes to uh, Rook. Azul has been eliminated. Well, I suppose this was inevitable. Ruggie, I entrust Ortho's care to you. He's in good hands. See you later, boss man. I'd be careful, my friend. You're the one left to play the long game now. As much as I hate to admit, Rook is a good ally. I expect great things from you. My, you two sure had a long chat. What was that you discussed? Ah, uh, just making sure Ortho's gonna be okay. I assure you, you have much bigger things to worry about. Well hello there, long time no see. Yeah, ah, uh, my bad. We're back though, again. 
first, thank you all so much for 700 subscribers, that's absolutely wild oh my god. Second, a reminder that I have a discord. The gears are moving in my brain so a lot more things are gonna happen in there. It's also a good place to talk to me and other enjoyers of my stuff. Woo. Okay that's all. And we're back with more, Night. Raven. Action! Lucky number 13. Let's check in on how everyone is doing. Wait, what's this? Attention all contestants. This is an announcement regarding the show moving forward. You have all made the jury, and you will no longer be on teams starting from the next episode. Cabins will be randomly reassigned. Today, you will be placed in teams at random and compete in a reward challenge. There will be no elimination this episode. The new teams are as follows. Team one will consist of Jade Leach, Floyd Leach, Ortho Shroud, Rook Hunt, and Silver. Team two will consist of Cater Diamond, Kaleem Alassim, Leona King Scholar, Ruggie Buki, and Vil Schoenheit. Thank you for your patience and good luck. Well, there you have it. No elimination on today's lucky episode. Now, let's see how everyone's getting along with their new teams. It sure was convenient to place Jade and Floyd in Team 1 together, and this does nothing to shake their sibling bond. Floyd has quite a soft spot for Ortho, and Ortho's warming up to one of the power players. Ortho and Jade are also on relatively friendly terms, especially when compared to Ortho and Rook's relationship. Despite these factors, Rook and Floyd are quite amicable towards each other. Rook is also fond of Jade, but the feeling is not mutual in the slightest. Quite the opposite in fact. Team 2, however, is the team of extremes. Callum and Kater are closer than ever, while Ruggie and Leona have never despised each other more. On the bright side, Ruggie and Vil are almost suspiciously friendly towards one another, and Vil and Leona are surprising no one with their mutual animosity. And now we finally get to see, today's not so lucky challenge. The branch of disgustingness. Throughout 9 rounds, contestants will be given a 9 course meal of food prepared oh so graciously by Lilia Van Rouge. The first team to finish a dish wins that round. The team that wins the most rounds will spend 2 days at the best 5 star resort in all of Twisted Wonderland where they'll be pampered, eat gourmet noki and be given medication for anything they may have caught while participating in this challenge. And so, the challenge begins. The first course is served, and Rook is the only person who doesn't finish, giving Team 2 an early lead. The second course served sees all 5 members of Team 2 failing to finish, tying up the score 1 to 1. The third dish goes the exact same way, giving Team 1 the lead. The fourth course follows the path of the second and third, and the score is now 3 to 1 with Team 1 in the lead. The fifth course shakes things up a bit and three members of Team 1 are unable to finish, closing the gap slightly in the scores. The sixth course comes, and even Silver is unable to finish, tying the score 3 to 3. Redemption comes the seventh course, with Kater and Leona unable to finish the dish making the score 4 to 3. The penultimate dish proved too much for all of Team 1, making the almost final score a 4-4 tie. The ninth and final course is served. Vil is the only person on Team 2 unable to finish, giving Team 1 the fifth and final point, meaning the winners of the reward challenge are... Team 1. At the resort, Floyd and Rook get into a small fight. Maybe it can be blamed on the food poisoning? Fortunately, Rook is able to find a friend in Ortho. Back at camp, Callum and Leona are also getting to know each other better. That's all for this episode, but stay tuned. More Night Raven action is coming after the break. This little section is gonna take some time, but I would really appreciate it if you stuck around and watched it. So, today is a pretty special day for me. Today officially makes two years that I decided I wanted to be a content creator. I was streaming for some time, but then 
shit happened. And then Night Raven Island really set the ball in motion. But I sort of fumbled it. But I, I think I got it back. We'll see though. These past two years have been fucking insane. And honestly, I probably would have lost my mind if it wasn't for some really important people. I want to take the time to thank some of y'all. You're absolutely amazing, and I love you all so much. So, uh, thank you to Candy, Dip, Razzle, Lux, Link, Shiro, and everyone else who had experienced my bullshit. If I named all of you, we would be here for like five hours, but all of you mean the world to me. I also want to thank everyone watching this right now. You're the reasons I keep coming back to this hellscape of the YouTube channel, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I think I've rambled long enough, so let's get back to what you're really here for. <laughs> Let's get this show on the road and jump right back in with episode 14 on Night Raven. Action! Ten contestants remain. Not very many left. It's every man for himself now, as teams no longer exist. Wait, what's that sound? Back by popular audience demand, it's Jack Powell. And who's that behind him? None other than... Deuce Spade. 10 becomes 12 in this thrilling twist that absolutely no one saw coming. This really was a twisted wonderland. Anyways, let's see how everyone's dealing with all these shakeups. Octavinel and Pamifir are the only remaining dorm alliances, and they hold on strong, as do Jade and Leona's somewhat terrifying alliance and the pop music club. Individually. Callum and Cater are taking on the world together, and Ruggie and Ortho are stuck together like glue. Ruggie is also increasingly fond of Jade, as is Leona. Perhaps this is the cause for the tension between Ruggie and Floyd. Floyd and Vil are also rather hostile towards each other, similarly to Silver and Callum. And it appears that Leona still cannot stand Jack despite the time apart. Putting the drama in total drama, I mean, what? Let's just move right along to book. Today's challenge. No pain, no gain. In random order, contestants will have to spin the wheel of misfortune to determine what torture they must endure. If a contestant backs out, or is unable to last 10 seconds, they are eliminated. If they pass their torture, they move to the next round. If a contestant can pass their torture without complaining, they can choose the next camper and the torture, but if their victim succeeds, they are eliminated. When only two remain, if the next contestant passes their torture, they win the challenge, otherwise the other contestant wins. The person who lasts the longest wins invincibility and a luxurious trailer to take home after graduation. Kata kicks off the challenge, and he must listen to Chef berate him, which was nothing for this influencer. Vil is next on the chopping block, and his torture is eating a large tub of ice cream, which was a piece of cake, uh, ice cream. Vil chooses Silver to go next and gives him. Jesus Christ Vil. Vil makes Silver stand in front of a goal while Chef Hatchet slap shots snapping turtles at him. Silver fails the challenge and is eliminated. Floyd's up after Silver, and he must milk an angry bull, which he somehow manages to do. Ortho is next, and his challenge is Ghost Pepper Taste Test. He does not pass the challenge and is eliminated. Rook's name is chosen, and the challenge given is Tickle Onslaught, where he must be tickled for one minute. He successfully passes. Deuce is up next, and he must listen to his own voice for one minute, which he successfully does. Leona's up to Deuce, and he is chosen to sit in a barrel of water and lake leeches, and does so without complaint. Leona chooses Rook and requests the hunter enter a box with Sasquatchaniqua. Rook refuses, and is eliminated. Jade's up next, and he successfully takes a water balloon to the face. Ruggy is next, and his challenge is to be defibrillated using two electric eels, which he takes like a champ. Jack's chosen next, and his challenge is waxing his face using marshmallows. He refuses and is eliminated. Callum is next, and his challenge is listening to new age music. He fails to do so, and is eliminated from the challenge. Kata comes up to Callum, and he must survive in a game of log roll versus Molotov the bear, which he does. 
Vil gets the next challenge, which is Skunk Jump. Vil fails his challenge, and is eliminated. Floyd's up next, and he is given Goo Shoes. Floyd fails his challenge, and is eliminated. Deuce is next, and the challenge chosen is hair plucking, which he fails to do so, thus being eliminated. Leona goes off to Deuce, and he wears the wooden shorts, woodpecker included, without complaint. Leona chooses Jade to go next, and the challenge chosen is getting a haircut with a chainsaw. Jade doesn't see it through, and is eliminated. Ruggie's next and his challenge is manure face mask, and he succeeds. Cater is off to Ruggie and the challenge is spike bed, which he successfully completes. Leona's up again, and he must stick his head in the kitchen garbage can. Leona refuses and is eliminated from the challenge. The final two contestants are Ruggie and Kater. Ruggie's name is chosen, and the final challenge given to him is Snake Rat. Ruggie fails to complete the challenge. Which means, the winner of today's challenge and invincibility is... Kater. After the challenge, Ruggie and Silver find a common interest. And finally, we move on to my personal favorite part. The award ceremony. Wait, what do you mean we ran out of awards? Well, what do you want me to do? Uh, show the confessionals? That's not a bad idea. Roll the tapes. If Floyd gets eliminated, then I'll finally be able to take pics without feeling like I'm being hashtag watched every time I want to interact with his buds. Like seriously, take a chill pill. I've been watching everyone ever since I was eliminated, and honestly, Floyd scares me at this point and needs to go home. We had some fun times together, Sea Lion, but no one gets between me and my brother. Not even you. First you dissolve Savannah Claw, then I come back and you're bullying Ruggie? I can't speak for everyone, but you really need to go home. Floyd has been nothing but mean this season, but it makes me sad to think that I won't be able to talk with him more. Maybe we could have been better friends if he wasn't as mean. I'm pretty sure that one leech was talking smack about me with Shroud when he was still here. Say it to my face next time so I can personally sort your mug out, weirdo. Maybe don't tell me who I can or can't be friends with, either. You may have been close friends with my brother, Leona King Scholar, but your sportsmanship has been so mean recently. Zoroa de poison and I don't see eye to eye, Monsieur Spontané has been a brute the soul game and he has been a turn on our form team side this entire time. I don't think I need to say anymore, Leona betrayed me more times than I can count at this point. Your own dorm head left you, and though you cling close to your brother, you're no better than a tyrant. We butted heads before, but you've really been testing my patience since episode 10. It's such a shame, you could have been extremely useful when Igea left. I remember when Floyd said that everyone else around us is our enemy, and it definitely has merit. But remember what Azul said? Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Say hello to Azul for me when you see him, would you, Floyd? Floyd has been eliminated. I don't want to do the stupid commercial. We were supposed to vote for Leona, not me. No, I'm not doing it. No one pays attention to this part anyway, I'll prove it. If you're watching this comment, Floyd should have won, and subscribe if you haven't already. Dang it I did the commercial. Let's jump right back in with episode 15 of, Night. Raven. Last episode was quite thrilling. Hopefully today is a little bit calmer. Let's check in on everyone. Alliances are looking good. Pamifia is now the only remaining dorm alliance. Congratulations. Individually, Ruggie and Jade are as close as ever. Ruggie and Ortho are also looking out for each other, and Ruggie's also incredibly fond of Vil. Vil and Rook remain the best of friends, as do Callum and Kata. Leona is incredibly fond of Rook, as well as Jade. 
However, Leona and Jack are probably best kept separated, and Ruggie is in the same boat regarding Leona. Let's move right along to uh, today's challenge. Lucky Key Hunt. Contestants must search certain areas for keys that will unlock different treasure chests which contain different rewards and punishments, including invincibility. Before the challenge begins, contestants each pull their own plank out of a bucket. Each plank depicts the location of a key. The campers have until 6 p.m. local time to get their keys. When time has run out, they can open their treasure chests, but some keys do not match any of the chests. Everyone except Silver is able to find their key. Ruggy and Kate are both win a leg lamp. Careful, it's fragile, must be Italian. Callum wins an accordion, maybe we can see it at the pop music club's next concert. Jade wins, a toaster, the lounge is right there. Leona wins cologne, he needs it after the kitchen trash can. Vil and Jack, unfortunately, find dud keys. Ortho wins two ships in a bottle. One for him, one for his brother, cute. Deuce wins chips and a can of soda. A little snack for you, Deuce. Rook has the last chest, and... Rook wins invincibility. After the challenge, Ortho has been giving his all, and others are noticing. Jade and Vil have a little chat and it seems to go well. Unfortunately, no peace can exist here, as Callum and Ortho get into a rather nasty fight. We're running a bit short on time, so let's just move straight to book. The award ceremony, the first award goes to book. Rook, the second award goes to book. Ortho, the third award goes to book. Callum, the fourth award goes to book. Silver, the fifth award goes to book. Jade, the sixth award goes to book. Jack, the seventh award goes to book. Ruggy, the eighth award goes to book. Callum, the ninth award goes to book. Deuce, the tenth award goes to book. Vil. Leona has been eliminated. Hey Leona, wait up, I gotta tell you something. Make it fast, my family's gonna want me home now. Sincerely, f*** you. You little, you're gonna regret that. Gentlemen, let's all just calm down. There's no need to be so hostile. No. I've had enough of all this buddy buddy bowl. I'm here to win, not make friends. I have to win. I have to. Oh, boohoo. Quit whining. Makes you seem even more pathetic. You lasted this long cause everyone else feels sorry for you. Not me though. Have fun. That's it. Nakuizumi! <laughs>